What's going on everybody? Today is my birthday, so I am a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and very thankful and grateful that I'm healthy and as happy as you can be in times like these. I ended up just hanging out today with my family in Houston, and just kind of got some work done, shooting this video for you guys, did the little work around the house for my mom and dad. This morning my mom made me an amazing French toast breakfast, which is my favorite and that's just a nice way to start the year. So I kind of just wanted to make a quick video and say thank you all who have been following along on this journey. And I appreciate all the love and outpouring from everyone across the world. It's been amazing. I know most of you know me from Hyperdrive, but you know, that was just one small piece of a dream that I've been building for honestly my entire life. So I thought it'd be cool to make a quick video, just kind of recapping 2019. It was the most insane year of my life. And then 2020 started off with a bang with Drift Week. And then the coronavirus happened and unfortunately now we're all just like, oh my God, what is even happening with life in general, right? So I hope that you all are staying home and safe and properly socially distanced. I know that they are starting to open up the cities worldwide slowly but surely. I hope that everyone is still maintaining, you know, some form of sanity throughout this entire process. And it's definitely not been easy for a lot of us, I know. So. If uh, you're one of the ones that are struggling, uh, my heart goes out to you. I hope that you can find a way to adapt and overcome to the situation at hand. I know myself, I've had to do a whole lot of things to change kind of my mindset and my type of income and just everything. My, my living situation, everything is, is really changing right now. So it certainly is a nice wake up call for a lot of us. And I think it's certainly something we can all learn from and grow. So hopefully you guys have been enjoying the videos. I've been really trying to push my YouTube content a lot and I appreciate everyone supporting that and sharing and hopefully learning some things. So you probably noticed that the videos have been changing quite a bit. I've really been focusing on the past few weeks on trying to revamp and upload as much as I can. You know, there's a lot for us to learn and I think with my experience I can help share that. But it's been tough, you know, not only doing the projects but shooting them and editing them and making sure that the quality is decent and that the editing is watchable and that sort of stuff. If you're not aware, Rohan, my good buddy who is helping me edit with a lot of the projects on the channel, has decided to put all of his focus into school. He's got a very large workload, so you know he's gonna not be helping as much on the channel. So we'll see less of his style edits and more of mine. Hopefully, you know, I'll get a little better as the time goes on and they can be more entertaining like his were, and you guys won't leave the channel because of it. But um, you know, I'm trying to come out with all kinds of different content. So I thought this would be a nice little video to kind of recap the last year of my life and just show all the things that I did and you know it'll be a nice reminder for me too on these slightly depressing times because we're not driving anything right now but overall I again appreciate everyone reaching out saying hello saying happy birthday if you guys at home want to share a memory with me or a memory you have of me I would love that you can post it here on YouTube you can do it on my Instagram you can tag me you can post on Facebook wherever any of your social medias and if you guys want to show some love, head over to my website, buy a t-shirt, buy a sticker, whatever like that. That helps me kind of support this dream. And that's really my only source of income right now because YouTube ain't paying me anything. So <laughs> once again, I love you all. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to this world opening back up. We're going to finally hit the racetrack and get to do a lot more drifting. Holy shit guys, 2019 was insane. I can't even believe what all went on. I just wanna do a quick video to kind of explain it and break it down in chronological order, but I think it'll still won't do it justice. It started off here in Austin. I moved into my own shop right across the street from Coda. So we're taking an adventure over to Coda. We're gonna go check out all the new cars, I guess. Oh my God, this is the Aston Martin that we were talking about. Look at this car, y'all. And this is a place that I can start to build my own dreams and not have to worry about shopmates or roommates or anything like that. And right away, we started off with a bang. Lone Star Drift partnered up with the Global Time Attack guys who were hosting an event at Circuit of the Americas. And they allowed us to come and put on a demo for all the fans. Yeah. 
one-handed even. <laughs> From there, I got to experience my first Radwood, which is a really great 90s themed car show. I took my car, everyone loved it, including myself, and I got to really just walk around the show and experience all these beautiful, period correct 90s cars, <laughs> including my favorite car of all time, which is a Ferrari F40. Unbelievable seeing that car in person, and just the, you know, the emotions came out. All right, I'm busting a nuts right now. F40 is my personal is favorite real F40, not a street car. car of all time. And this is one in front of me right now. And he drove this here on the street. Champion Red. He street drove it here, of course. This car, oh my god. I competed in all seven rounds of Lone Star Drift this year, which the competition was absolutely insane. I think it's the most leveled up that anyone's been. We had drivers from all across the nation come out. I had to battle Taylor Rayner a couple times in his V8 Miata. I had some failures, I had some successes, I even got a trophy, and overall it was an incredible season. So one of the goals for myself this year was to not just be a drifter, you know, I want to try and hone my skill set and become more of a well-rounded driver. And of course, continuing to teach at Rally Ready has done a lot for that, not only earning a paycheck thrashing cars through the woods, but also, you know, really developing that skill set. However, I've been dying to drive here at Circuit of the Americas ever since that demo. So I applied with Audi driving experience and I got the job. There we go. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, fuck. Let's see if we can hit that 150. No, that's not. Oh, yeah. Come on, baby. 120. 130. Yeah, I'm a little better. Finish this job. So round six for Long Star Drift, I finally won something. I got first place. I had to battle my ass off against Nick Novak, and that really turned out fantastic because not only do I get the trophy and the prize, but there was a special caveat that the winner got an all-expense-paid trip to SEMA to drift their car with the Hoonigans, which was, of course, incredible. So kind of a, a lifelong achievement there. I've always wanted to drive at SEMA. I've always wanted to showcase my car at SEMA and now getting to drift with the Hoonigans was fantastic. And not a week later, the highlight of my entire career, Hyperdrive, drops on Netflix. The coaster ride I was on in that show was just insane and over a hundred thousand of you guys decided to follow me on Instagram. That's just insane all because I crashed my car on some TV show like what was that? I mean that whole experience was just absurd and I'm so glad that it's been so well received by everyone. You know everyone's been so supportive and I'm so grateful to be able to showcase that and share it with you all. Life certainly did not slow down, even after Hyperdrive dropped, you know, I had 24 hours to enjoy it, and then I had to hit the road. It was time to go to Gridlife. So Gridlife is an event that is, you know, where they take grassroots and pros and kind of combine them together, and we get to drive with each other at the most iconic tracks in the country. This was at Road Atlanta. You go downhill, fourth gear, almost 100 miles an hour, and then throw it in as, as backwards as you can, and overall, just the vibes of the event were fantastic really exciting, super fun. Got to drive with Osbo and some other fantastic drivers and really just kind of showcase what was everything was about and overall just had a fantastic time driving and enjoying that lifestyle event that has no pressure of competition, nobody cares how fast your car is, it's all just about having a good time, which is definitely the kind of event that I vibe with. This year definitely was not all sunshine and roses, you know, I had my fair share of carnage, which was I don't know, mostly my fault. Oh shit, there is something wrong. All right, so my car, unfortunately the transmission blew up. So she sits there in her sad, sad state.
life, baby. So obviously with my truck being crashed, now I have to figure out how the hell am I getting to SEMA, which is in Las Vegas, a near 24 hour straight drive. But luckily Texas Dave from Rally Ready let me borrow his truck. He came to the rescue and said, here you go, man. I know you gotta make it there. Have fun, put 2000 miles on my truck. So thank you, Dave, that was awesome. Kubo and I, who's another instructor there, sent it, drove straight through the night all the way to Vegas where we met up with Patrick Carson, who also was invited to drive with the Hoonigans. But first, we went to Kenda's corporate party at the end of the year. It was at Speed Vegas. This is a beautiful venue in Las Vegas where they have tons of exotics and drift cars and off-road experiences you can drive. Well, we had the skid pad all to ourselves and it was really fantastic because Patrick and I put on such a great show for all the Kenda corporate execs you know, including the president of the company. I actually had the president of Kenda in my drift car, in the passenger seat, screaming and hollering, having the best time, which really set things up for the future in a fantastic fashion. Some other noteworthy things I got to do this year was Toyota hired me to drift their brand new 2020 Supra at a track here in Austin. That was an incredible experience and something that I'll never forget, being able to drive literally car number one. Insane. I, I got to drive at English Town, which is way up in New Jersey, something I've always wanted to do. And that was with a bunch of people from Netflix, some of the executives, and Chris Knapp, the owner's son. Uh, you know, Hyperdrive opened up a bunch of new opportunities too for media. And I was on the news, I was on CNN, I got interviewed by Headcrack and their daily whatever the hell show he calls it. <laughs> uh, I was on Motor Trend and some other great noteworthy media, which is really awesome. I got to put some of my driving skills that I learned at the Audi driving experience to the test, driving up revs, 370Z, right after SEMA at the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational. That was really fun. Being able to kind of show that I am capable of not just drifting, but you know, driving someone's car responsibly and quickly is really something that I was looking forward to being able to showcase. Oh shit, Mr. Cone, please keep my eyes up. I even got to participate in some really great projects with some close friends. My buddy Max First just bought an Evo 9 as a camera car and we went and rented out Harris Hill and literally just me, Nate Hamilton and Harrison drifting through Harris Hill trying to avoid hitting Max's brand new camera car. It was an unreal experience and something I've always wanted to do. Uh, next time I'm gonna have to drive the camera car because I'm dying to do that as well. Unfortunately, the last Lone Star Bash at Mineral Wells happened this year. Mineral Wells is a track that I've been going to for over a decade. It's literally my very first drift event was at Mineral Wells in this car, actually, that I'm sitting in now that I think about it. And unfortunately, this year was the last year. It's closing down for the future, but I got to experience that. I got to take Rohan, who got to drift his first time at Mineral Wells. So it was kind of a nice full circle and I even got to test out a new project car which I'll be telling you guys all about next year. I'm really excited to release that content and show you all exactly how to start drifting yourself. I got to do some testing in Chris Taylor's V-Spec car out at Harris Hill. I was hired to drive the camera car for a really great RTR project, 
with great friends Danny Puckett and Max First at the Rally Ranch. I even got to announce with Cole from Sierra Cars at an ARX event and watch my boy Texas Day bring home the win for his class in the RX3 cars. <laughs> This is the final, you guys. Thanks for joining us. So of course, none of this would be possible without all the sponsorships and partnerships. You guys have all been amazing. Thank you so much. So not only this year was all focused on driving, but you know, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Uh, I need to supplement my income somehow. So I built a website, fieldingshredder.com with a merch store. And you guys have been very supportive of that. So thank you. You know, having all this different stuff that I can share with the fans to connect is really fantastic. And it's not just the web store, you know, I've got a lot of help from people in my world that are really integral to this, you know, Rohan behind the camera, huge help and thank you very much. My girlfriend Alyssa has been super helpful and supportive of everything. And everyone who, you know, has reached out in one way or another to help out, you know, this, this dream is definitely takes an army to do. And, uh, you know, every time I post on Instagram, hey, I need help sanding my car or help with this or that, it's been really fantastic to see everyone come out and kind of lend a hand and make this dream a reality. It needs to look cool. If it looks stupid, fuck it. Oh, yeah.